Welcome to another edition of SVG Sports Tech On Demand. I'm Jason Dackman, Chief Editor at SVG, and we've got a friend of the organization joining us today, Bryn Norton. He's VP of Specialized Sales at Lumen Technologies. Bryn, how are you today? Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for having me here, Jason. Yeah, well, well really thank you for taking the time. Appreciate it. So, uh, you know, you are responsible for steering customers and partners towards, uh, you know, solutions and best practices uh, across the, across your region. Yeah. Um, and you focus a lot on the global solution consultancy practice, uh, team of con- technology consultants, uh, evangelists, things like that. Um, yeah. So just, you know, I, I'd love to hear an update on uh, where Lumen's at right now. We all know that the rebrand uh, is now very much entrenched. No yeah. more level three, all Lumen. Uh, how, uh, how has the organization been progressing and what have been some big things for you lately? Yeah, no, uh, great question, Jason. Yeah, look, I think the first thing I'll call out is that we, we're moving at speed. So from, from a Lumen perspective, we're seeing a lot of interest in the market, a lot of curiosity about the next wave of uh, technical transformations. If you think about what Lumen is about, you know, and we talk about it on Lumen.com, it's about enabling the human experience, about driving the adoption of techno- technology and focusing on an outcome-based conversation. And we're seeing a lot of success, uh, quite frankly. And, and again, as part of that, we're seeing a lot of engagement from our customer base. Uh, and it's really interesting times. Uh, quite exciting and uh, a nice uh, pivot from the uh, traditional organization, Jason. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, especially as we, uh, fingers crossed, uh, get back to a little bit of normalcy and kind of emerge from the pandemic, we've seen the sports sector uh, undergo a pretty big transformation. And they're kind of set for what's coming next. I know some people have called it sports 4.0 uh, yeah, and, and, you know, you had uh, had spoken to me a little bit about this and I'm just curious where you see that sports media sector headed and how you guys are going to enable whatever this next uh, iteration of sports is. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's really interesting. I, I love sports 4.0 series. We, we, we chatted earlier about, you know, we, we talked about retail 4.0, industry 4.0. Well, what about the sports industry? What does that mean for them? How do they begin to leverage these new technologies? Well, actually, we're using the wrong word, but these technologies are becoming more prevalent uh, as we move to out of that sort of COVID type cycle. Right. And, and I think there's, there's kind of four areas. Everybody knows us from a VivX perspective, a broadcast perspective. I think that's a well-trod path and we will continue to drive that strategy around how we connect to venues across the globe. So putting that to the side, for me, there's three other areas which are really key. I think the first one, and again, I've had a lot of conversations around this, around sort of smart venues, smart solutions. So it's about how how do sports venues begin to monetize their footprint throughout the week rather than just the daily cycles? And and what this has meant is a lot of them beginning to look at retail, uh, hospitality, how they can drive more intelligence around those individuals. And, And one of the things we've seen over the last two years is that the application and digital experience have become more prevalent around how people monetize that experience. So I think the first thing is venues becoming more intelligent, more diverse. There's also another trend that you to dig further into that. It's about actually more flexible venues where sure. you can bring multiple parties together to drive more products for individuals to consume. So that, to me, that's the first point. Uh, the second one is fan engagement. So the concept of dual screen about Maybe you're inside that venue. How do you how do you get a slow mo replay? How do you get more information delivered to that device? How do you connect that device, and how do you have a seamless digital experience? That again, we're seeing a lot of interest in that piece, but that's moving beyond the physical venue. So to someone sat at home as well, and how do you drive that sort of fan continuum all the way through? So it's driving uptake, it's driving engagement. So that's the, the second piece. And the third one is, is quite topical at the moment. And I've got quite a few colleagues uh, who've come over from the UK uh, on this one. It is actually sports betting. Sure. Um, you know, we're seeing a real shift uh, in, in sports betting as a whole. That's driving some levels of complexity around where data needs to reside and sit. And that's driving and beginning to open up certain conversations about edge, as an example, as a way of facilitating that. So for me, they're, they're the four pillars. I think the last three pillars are where we see the most uptake right now because everybody's kind of comfortable with the concept of broadcast it's yeah. what can sit alongside that jason and that's where we're driving our conversations today well let's start let's stay on the sports betting for a while because uh, you know obviously uh the entire industry feels especially here in north america where legalization is is starting to tidal wave uh that this is sort of the savior of the business this is what's the the, the next thing the next huge 
uh, monetization opportunity for broadcasters and teams and, and everywhere in between. So how do you see the edge actually playing a role then in you know, those sports betting applications and being able to ramp up experiences with sports betting that just weren't there before? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, I think there's twofold here. So the first piece is a lot of these uh, institutions which now want to move into those markets may not have that capability within their business. So how do you start delivering feature-rich digital experiences? So that complex application experience to your users. Um, they may not have a skill set. So that, that's the first piece. How do, you, how do you deliver a platform that's easily consumable that someone can deliver that content to that can be consumed? So that's the first part of that edge experience. The second piece is actually about data. I, I, I kind of want to call it data sovereignty, but at, at a state level, how do you keep that data within that state so you, you remain compliant to the requirements that are put on you as an individual and or an institution around that, that sort of commercial arrangement that you're making around that sort of that, that betting experience. And Edge has a part to play in that. Because again, if, if you, I don't know, I'm using a fit, hypothetical example, but let's say Colorado opened up tomorrow for X type of uh, gambling or betting experience. Um, you, you would now have a requirement to build up your own infrastructure in that environment that, that involves a large amount of capital outlay to deliver that and a large amount of expertise. Or you go to someone like Lumen that goes, well, hang on, I've got an operational model where you can consume that infrastructure in market that enables you to quickly move into that market, take advantage and capitalize uh, on that growth market. So that, that's where I see Edge having a play. It's about giving the platform people to consume and also giving the infrastructure, making it easy for people to move into those new markets, Jason. Sure. Yeah. I want to go to one of your other pillars that you mentioned, which is fan engagement. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the term has been radically changed as a result of the pandemic, right? Uh, the way that uh, fans engage with live games and ancillary content is very different than it was 15 months ago, uh, especially considering, uh, you know, a lack of fans in the venue and, and things like that. So I'm curious uh, on your end, how you see that whole fan engagement ball game changing and what role Lumen is going to play as that continues to evolve, I, I think probably even faster than it has over the last few months. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, let me step away from sports for a second. I'm going to bring it back to sports uh, in, in, in a moment. I think what we've seen over the last let's call it 18 months, is a real focus from enterprises around the value of data and how they capitalize on that data, how they understand what, what, what is Bryn interested, what is Jason interested in, and how do I leverage that, and how do I layer that onto them so they have a more engaging experience. So irrespective of se sector, we're seeing that common theme. Now, then we pivot to the world of sports. We're seeing exactly the same thing here. And, and, and an acceleration of that is that how do I understand who Bryn is how do I understand how Bryn likes to be engaged? And how do I create some form of continuum for Bryn? So no matter how he's interacting with my uh, facility, my, my function, he gets a continuous experience that capitalizes on that, that drives Bryn to engage more. And, and that, that's the key thing that we're seeing across the industry. Now, what that begins to mean from on a, on a practical basis, that could be th things from like digital signage. As, you, as soon as you move into a facility, they understand who you are, what you're interested in. Maybe you're interacting with a uh, web presence around tickets or engaging about booking some time or some description within that venue, right? It understands who you are, what you've done before, and it will, it will present preferences to you. Now, behind all of that sits a, a large requirement on an organization to understand where that data is, to bring that data into a sing, in single place and then begin to act on that data. Then feathering over the top of that, we're seeing an adoption of things like artificial intelligence to start making recommendations to those individuals. Because the last thing you want to do is create this massive data lake where you've got to have lots of people touching constantly. So it's now, how do I begin to automate that data lake to optimize that, that individual? So when you start thinking about fan engagement, I think that's probably the biggest thing we're seeing. And sitting alongside that is the fans are, are, have got a much higher requirement now around physical, physical application. You know, that bar has been lifted. You know, they expect those to be a real feature rich experience. So that's about in game experience. So how do I begin to add more content to that application? So that it then begins to grow that whole overall experience to make to, to grow, to drive that desire to engage more. So it becomes this cycle, Jason. And, and that's what we're seeing across the industry as a whole. Sure. When we look at that area. 
Yeah. And I mean, right alongside that is the smart venues like you talked about. I mean, one hand shakes the other when it comes to fan engagement outside of the venue and fan engagement inside with some of these advanced next generation smart venues. So, uh, again, curious uh, what role Lumen can play in really making that venue more flexible, Mm -hmm. uh, more agile and, uh, you know, just a a lot more potentially AI driven and, and fan serving. Yeah, no, absolutely. We, we can do the whole, <laughs> whole experience end to end. And it really it's about where you want us to drop in. So when I'm engaging with customers, I, you know, I talk about infrastructure platform application. OK, so you need the infrastructure to acquire. Yeah, you need the platform to analyze, to bring. And then finally, you need the application to act. So it's about taking the customer on that journey. So. We can do everything from Bluetooth beacons, Wi-Fi infrastructure, point of sales equipment, digital signage, all the way through to where, where does compute reside? Do you want to be building out many data centers in all of your venues, or do you want to consume that compute capability from the edge of a network? I'll go edge as an example. But I think the key thing, the way that where we're showing up, and I think we're showing up differently in the marketplace, is about having a conversation about. What is the digital experience you're trying to drive? We can do all of these things. They're just very, very, very malory, yeah? But what's really more important is what outcome do you want from a fan? What outcome do you want from a venue? What digital products are you looking to drive into your user base? Starting there, then working backwards into the technology. So I think it's very easy for people to get carried away by the products and the shiny, yeah. shiny, shiny bells and stuff. I mean, there's a really good example, and I know it's a different industry. It's just a report that I was reading recently, which we did with Microsoft and IDC. That said, for instance, in the manufacturing industry, I think it's 83% of all proof of concepts around edge fail. And you start digging into the data, and what the data will tell you eventually is because you got carried away with technology and flashy lights, you didn't actually understand what the business is trying to achieve. Right. So, you know, I challenge my team that looks after smart, smart locations to say, hey, start understanding what the KPIs are, understand what the business wants, then work backwards into the technology. So Start with the end goal, process. right? And, and, and remember what you're trying to accomplish and then build from there, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I think the final piece around all of that is making sure that you deliver an infrastructure that will allow you to flex and change because no one really knows what, what's going to happen over the next 12, 16, 18 months, yeah? What's the uptake going to look like? You know, are people going to rush back in? Are they going to be hesitant? Are we going to see more than we did before? Because no one's engaged in the sports arena for the last 12 months. So we're all going to, so it's about creating an agile environment that can easily flex and change with the demands of the organization without penalizing business. Sure. And that's a really important part for me, Jason. Yeah. uh, There's one thing I think in this business that we all know, and that's prepare to be wrong, assume even that you'll be wrong and and be able to to have the flexibility to adapt when that happens. Um, Bryn, wanted to just kind of close out with you here. We've talked about the edge a good amount here, but I'm going to give you like a lightning round question here at the end. Give me three ways you see edge computing impacting the overall experience for sports, sports media, sports broadcasting, the game day experience. What are three big ways that you see uh, the, you know, edge computing changing the ball game? Pardon the pun. No, no, not the pun. Um, First thing is the ability to fail fast. So what I really like about Edge is creating a platform that people can come to, test new creative ideas, be agile, drive change. Does it work? Does it not? And move on. So that to me is a big, big thing. You know, but those days of large capital investment have gone away. So that's my first one. Um, the second one is about enablement. It's about reducing the barriers to technology. So there's a really good use case, which I've seen, which I'm working on currently, is around video cameras. Uh, I've got a customer their facility, their venue. They want to understand flow dynamics. They were struggling to understand how people were moving through the facility. They didn't want to make large capital investment. You've got video cameras. Let's take those feeds from those video cameras, run them through the edge engine, which is which within the edge engine sits an, an AI function that allows you real-time feedback. So it's allowed them to easily adopt new technology. And I think the final piece around edge is around that feature-rich experience. So it's about giving consumers like ourselves that real-time feedback loop. So where we'd see those barriers driven by latency and response time to send a feedback to a compute node and back to the user, that's gone away. There's a lot more options now. So we, as an industry, can get creative about the fan experience that we want to drive. They would be my big three, Jason. 
Very cool. Well, Bryn, I think we're, there's a lot to, uh, to to change within the next few months, and I'm sure next time that we chat, uh, we'll have a, a whole new conversation about where the industry is headed. Uh, yeah. And hopefully that's in person. I would love that and, and that uh, maybe we're, we're trending in the right direction. So uh, that's for next time, though. And Bryn, for now, uh, stay safe and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for your time, Jason. Have a great day.